In section 2.3.1, we're going to start to talk about other ways that we can measure a data set. Now we talked about these three ways that we can describe a data set in the last section. We talked about the idea of a measure of center. What does a typical data value look like? Again, this was covered in section 2.2. We also talked about shape back in section 2.1, but in section 2.3.1, that is the section we're currently in, we're going to talk about this idea of measure of spread. How far away from typical is typical? To get a sense of, again, what we mean by this, let's take a look at example number one. Suppose that I teach two different sections of a particular class, maybe say it's Math 165, and on a recent uh, exam, a random sample of students from each class had the following scores. Okay, so I randomly select, say, uh, five people from each class, and these are the scores that I get. Now, I should be able to go ahead and easily calculate an average test score for each class sample. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and remember that since I have a sample, I have a particular symbol for my average. I have an X bar. Now, I'm going to write two different x bars here and I'm going to separate them or distinguish them with a little subscript so that number one stands for class number one and number two stands for class number two. Now of course I'd like to be able to compute these averages and I can do that in one of two ways. Remember I could just take all these numbers, add them together and divide by five or of course I could go to my calculator and on my calculator I could go to stat, could go to edit and I could type these lists into my calculator and be ready to do a one var stats command. If you're interested in taking this approach, and I would encourage you to do so, since we'll use it later, go ahead, pause the video so you can make sure you enter your numbers just like I've entered mine, with my class 1 in list 1 and my class 2 in list 2. Now once those have been entered, you can easily go ahead, click on stat, go to calculate, and make sure that you're going to do a 1 var stats with list number 1 for class 1. Notice here when I go to calculate, I end up with an X bar of 110. So I'm going to go back here and state that my X bar was 110, we'll call those points. Okay. Now I can do the exact same thing for uh, class number two and their exam scores. I would just go right back to calculate and I would change my list here to be list number two. When I go down to calculate and I hit enter, notice Ah, again, I get 110 for my average. So back here, I can write 110 points. Now this is kind of interesting. Both classes of, or both students from these classes, these samples have the exact same average. So besides the average test score, what else might we be able to observe about the different data sets that would help us to distinguish them? Right, because obviously just stating what's a typical score may not be here fully descriptive. There's probably some other things I can do. Well, what do you notice are some other major differences between class number one scores and class number two scores? Well, one thing that you might notice is that scores from class two are much closer together than the scores from class one, right? I mean, like if I look at class two scores, they're almost all identical, right? I mean, there's even a couple that match perfectly, but they're all right around that 110 mark. Whereas class one, I can see that the my scores in class one the scores are more spread out right I mean they they are kind of spread out over a larger span of total values this is really important this is something that we hope to be able to quantify can I in some way measure create some sort of numerical representation for how spread out each of these individual data sets actually is. That would be kind of nice to know because I can definitely see that the spreading out of the scores, how far apart they are from each other, is definitely a large distinguishing factor.
And this is the idea here of measures of spread, or sometimes what are called measures of dispersion or measures of variation. We want to know how far away from a typical value is typical, or how spread out is the data set from a typical value. So what we're going to see in this section is we're going to be working with four different measures of dispersion. We'll ultimately whittle this down to pretty much just two of measures that are going to be important for us, but we'll talk about all four as they come up. The four different things we're going to talk about are range, what we call the IQR, standard deviation, and the variance. And this is kind of like how in the last section when we talked about measures of center, we had three of them, mean, median, and mode. And we saw that some of them were more beneficial in certain cases. Well, here we have four measures of spread, and in the videos to come, we'll see how exactly they get calculated, how we can use our calculator to find them, and which ones tend to be good in certain instances.